Hey there guys, Fireman Official here and welcome to this Age of Empires 4 video. So patch 11009 is a new patch in February. This is going to be great because this is going to fix a lot of the issues that we had um, since the last patch. And yeah, I mean a lot of things have been actually been changed and improved. So this is actually looking very optimistic for the game. Things are slowly getting there I think. Okay, so patch 11009 is releasing later this week. And so we wanted to provide a preview of what's to come for Age of Empires 4. By the way, I will link in the description the link to get to this article, so you can check it out later if you need to. But I'm going to go through it quickly with you, those of you who actually kind of liked it being read out and just having something to listen to. So here we are. In patch 11009, we're focusing on responding to a number of items you, as the players, have brought to our attention. As always, we appreciate you for acting as our compass as we continue to balance and improve. And I think this has been happening, like each patch has been really fixing things pretty well um, so it, it's great it's great for the game for sure this time around we're making some general changes to siege to ensure there is sufficient counterplay making changes to reduce animation cancelling's impact on the rate of fire to refocus on high level strategy and doing another pass on balance for a variety of our civilizations read on for the full list of patch notes including in-depth developer descriptions of why these adjustments were made all right, so it looks like the Age of Siege is over um, and they're going to address the animation cancelling. So these were two big, big issues surrounding Age of Empires 4. And so, yeah, we can really see the big changes being made. Uh, note, upon updating to this patch, you will no longer be able to utilize replays from previous updates. Campaign and skirmish saves from the previous patch are impacted and will no longer be accessible after you update. So bear that in mind, guys. Get your save games done and completed. As always, these patch notes are not final and are subject to change. Blah, blah, blah. We know about that already. Okay, so some of the general changes. We've made improvements to the animation cancelling issues previously called out by players. We'll be keeping an eye out for your feedback to make additional adjustments in this area. But with this patch, units can no longer easily perform faster attacks than intended by issuing a move command after attacking to cancel the cooldown between hits. So I think it looks like that's just been taken out for everything. Um, they did have animation cancelling right at the beginning of the kind of life cycle of the game. Uh, for all units, they took away that animation cancelling for scouts, and now it looks like um, they've taken. Well, actually, no, they didn't take away from the scouts completely. They uh, the scouts still had the melee um, animation cancelling, uh, so they might have taken that out away now. It looks like they've taken it away, so we'll we'll probably test this out. I think some of the big animation cancelling issues were things like with fire lancers and um, uh, elephants, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this one plays out. Fixed a bug where the palisade walls can no longer be targeted. So yeah, that was a little bit of a bug where I think if you kind of pretend or kind of really go close with a villager to the palisade wall, uh, you right click on it, but you don't actually start building it. Um, it kind of fades out and a different shade. The base of the palisade goes to a different shade and you can't actually even target it anymore. And it just comes stuck. Uh, so it looks like they're fixing that bug, which is great. Okay, now moving to trebuchet projectiles. They now deal area of effect damage when missing their intended target. That's actually really huge because trebuchets aren't particularly accurate. So when they miss, it kind of's like, well, that was kind of pointless. So, and it kind of makes sense, you know, hurling big boulders, they probably should have some area of effect damage. Let's just check the developer note. Okay, as trebuchet accuracy is low, well, there we are. This means they will now deal splash damage much more effectively at upgrades such as the English civilization's shattering projectiles is now much more powerful. All right, fixed a bug where incendiary ship's damage range increased significantly after researching the explosives tech. Now we all knew about this, the uh, demolition ships, and well, they were just insane in Imperial Age, and it looks like that's gonna be fixed. Fixed a bug where the incendiary ship were exploding two or even more times in some cases. Yep, yeah, like double, double detonations, that was nuts. To keep the unit balanced though, we've increased the explosion damage from 300 to 400. So actually they're going to be, uh, well I suppose it's still a net decrease because they were like sometimes exploding twice. So it sounds like it's still a, a little bit of a nerf, but you know, they don't want to nerf it completely. All right, so scout cost increased from 60 to 70 food. All right, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, I suppose, yeah, well let's just see what they've said in developer note. We like that there's additional utility to scout unit besides just scouting. It's not, it's got a generous health pool, carries animal carcasses and provides an effective torch. However, at only 60 food cost, it's quite a bit cheaper than any other military unit. Targeting the cost has no effect on the player's initial scout, 
and is especially impactful for players making armies of this unit. Okay, Rus players, beware. Uh, that's something that you need to adjust to. All right, so let's take a look at fishing. Developer note. We want finding a body of water full of fish to be an exciting opportunity. However, the gather rate of fishing boats was creating lopsided games with no comeback potential. This modest reduction still makes fishing the waters valuable while opening up other strategic avenues for the player who isn't able to fully capitalize. As well, fishing is intended to be a scarce resource like deer or sheep that provides a burst of food for a limited time. That's actually really important because a lot of the maps had so much fish like each tile of fish had so much food in it and all they ha also they had like multiple tiles of it. So it's a bit insane. Um, we we'll kind of need to keep an eye on this because each map will be different. So we need to have a look at actually how much the uh, fish has been reduced. Let's check a look. Uh, it's got some specific numbers here. Changes to shore fish. Fishing ship harvests rate reduced from 75 to 66 or 0.75 to 0.66. Shore fish reduced from 1000 to 500 foods. That's a massive cut. Well, it's 50 percent um but it looks like the number of tiles some maps have so many tiles of fish but that's still overall a huge reduction well 50 percent reduction changes to deep fish fishing ship harvest rate reduced from 1.1 to 1 deep fish reduced from 2000 to 1000 food that's a massive thing uh decrease as well yeah half all right siege i wonder whether the age of siege is still around let's take a look siege formation catch up speed reduced from 100% to 40%. Developer note, when units in formation reposition, they can get a speed bonus. This value maxes out at 40% for infantry and cavalry. However, siege units were moving much faster and this could make them difficult to chase down, even with cavalry. Yeah, we've seen some, some funny clips of uh, just siege units being absolutely crazy fast. We've standardized this value to 40% to remove the siege race car effect. Yeah, the race cars. Well, that's good this is a really great change horseman camel rider fire lance and knight torch bonus damage versus siege increased from plus 10 to plus 20. okay this is uh incredible this is going to be you know you can't just rely on siege anymore because uh, they can be taken down it looks like with these changes we'll see how this plays out developer note cavalry is intended to counter siege weapons their high mobility should facilitate the ability to quickly close down the distance and destroy siege weapons cavalry are more expensive than infantry so getting a critical mass to quickly see kill siege weapons is too costly. Increasing cavalry torch damage versus siege weapons helps them shine in this anti-siege role. Yep, sounds good. Bombard health reduced from 480 to 400. Yeah, that's pretty big change. Uh, bombards were crazy good. See additional changes to Chinese specific bombard health below. Okay, we'll need to keep an eye on that because the Chinese bombards were insane. Developer note, we found that bombards high health meant that it was able to fight cost effectively versus too many types of units. Its primary role is anti-building. We are still concerned about the damage per shot of this unit and will be closely monitoring its performance. Okay, so they're keeping an eye on it. This is good. Siege weapons now also deal their bonus damage versus ships. Yeah, that was, know, that was a pretty bad bug. Sometimes it just wasn't really firing at ships properly and not doing the damage. Um, but here we are. Developer note, naval units are so powerful versus land units, it makes water maps hopeless after a player's docks are destroyed. This change is targeted at allowing siege weapons to trade blows with ships. Uh, that's pretty good actually. It's a pretty big change, it's a pretty big change. Adjustments made across the board to reduce siege move speed. Developer note, siege is meant to be lumbering, slow and powerful. Currently the power level of siege is there, but it often times is too difficult to pick off when repositioning or retreating. This change is aimed at adding more risk and strategy to movement and positioning of the siege equipment. Yeah, sometimes they're impossible to, to get rid of. But uh, these are really good changes. Bombard move speed reduced from 0.88 to 0.62. Springled move speed reduced from 1 to 0.88. Mangonel move speed reduced from 0.88 to 0.75. And Nesta bees from 0.94 to 0.81. Big changes, big changes. All right, so Civ specific changes. The Abbasid Dynasty. All right, let's check this one. Uh, Abbasid... Oh, it's actually Abbasid anyway. Abbasid age up time reduced from 120 to 105 for every age. This is big because we never had any control over that, um, obviously with the House of Wisdom. Um, but yeah, here we are. Develops a note. Abbasid. The Abbasid. It's the Abbasid, guys. Abbasid lacks the ability to speed up landmark construction times with villagers to age up. 
Instead, they get to save their villager time to gather resource. This mechanic is intended to be a bonus, however, can feel like a penalty as it limits the civilization's ability to dynamically adapt to the game state. We've reduced the age up time so the Abbasid House of Wisdom feels not like a limiting factor but instead a powerful bonus. Yeah, sounds good. Abbasid Dynasty and Delhi Sultanate shared changes. Increased explosive Dao destination range from 1 to 2 tiles, so it matches the intended explosion radius. Okay, good. Dao damage increased from 8 to 10. That's great because, let's face it, that was a pretty poor unit on water before. Uh, but yeah, the Dao was by far the weakest of the arrow ships. Yep. We've increased its damage to be competitive with options of the other sieves. Berry harvest bonus increased from 25% to 30%. Oh, that's interesting. Berry capacity increased from 10 to 13 all right, so the berries are getting a big boost. This is uh, great for the Delhi and the Abbasid. Sorry, the, the Abbasid. Oh, God, I have to keep remembering that. The Abbasid. Develop a note. We found many players preferring to take sheep over berries because it saved villager walking time. Our intention is for the Delhi Sultan and the Abbasid dynasty to play differently from the start with an added focus on gathering berries. All right, sounds good to me. Because uh, it is their bonus after all. Right, Chinese. Chinese clock tower bombard health reduced from 720 to 600. Wow, that's a lot. Official unit can no longer supervise on landmarks. Oh, wow. Okay, that, that's massive because the clock tower bombards, you know, they obviously they have to come up from the astronomical clock tower and you could use an imperial official to supervise that. Uh, this is clearly targeted at that. All right, Chinese officials supervising their clock tower means the effective output of the landmark is tripled. This level of power is creating less varied and interesting unit compositions as they could just make such a large and powerful mass of siege units. Now, as you guys know, I used to love playing, or I still do love playing Chinese, so this is a big hit. I'm not gonna lie, it's a big hit. Reload drills, reload bonus time reduced from 33% to 20%. Develop a note. Reload speed reductions are extremely powerful. These technologies were some of the highest outputs in the game. We've brought them down in, to be in line with similar unit enhancements like incendiary arrows and chemistry. All right. Nesta B's damage versus ships increased from 0 to 4. Yeah, could you imagine that? 0. They literally had 0 damage. Fixed a bug where the Imperial officials tax collection cooldown sometimes didn't trigger. Okay, so time to look at the HRE. Increased prelate base move speed from 1 to 1.12. Developer note, prelates are a critical piece of the HRE. They are intended to be repositioned within the economy as well as move with the army to heal and buff units with inspired warriors. Increasing the move speed helps prelates perform both their roles more effectively. Yeah, I mean, HRE, is, yeah, this is make, kind of makes sense, really. They shouldn't be particularly slow. I wonder how they compare to the Delhi Sultanate Scholars move speed, though, because uh, I suspect they need to be kind of on par with each other. Inspire cast range increased from three to four tiles. Develop a note, properly positioning prelates was difficult with the short range and made it hard to fully buff groups of villagers. This will increase the unit's output to intended levels. For example, it was sometimes difficult to buff villagers on a wood line and villagers gathering sheep at the town center. All right, HRE players, you've got it here. This is a great, great boost for the prelate. Mongols, ooh, okay, this is gonna be important. They have one of the highest um, kind of wins, win rates, because obviously incredible Civ. Let's see what happens with this uh, Mongol civilization and the changes. Several changes made to adjust raid. Developer note, Mongols getting lots of resources for burning enemy buildings allows them to snowball an early lead with no hope of comeback. Getting resources from burning a building allows the Mongols to create more troops to burn more buildings. Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. Base level of the raid ability reduced from 50 to 25. Raid bounty upgrade bonus decreased from 75 to 50. Raid bounty improved upgrade bonus decreased from 100 to 75. So this is pretty decent nerf. I think they're taking it step by step. Um, it's still kind of the double production of the Ovu, but that's kind of maybe kind of hurting things a little bit. But I guess they've got to do small changes and they can't nerf it completely because Mongols are supposed to be aggressive. So in the comment section below, guys, uh, as well with any of the sieves, do let me know in the comment section below if there are any particular things you feel do need to be adjusted and balanced a bit better. Um, I think Mongols, this is a, this is a start. We'll see what the play, players, um, kind of the top level say, and and also the the win rates and the win percentages. We'll see how that changes with these uh, nerfs. Okay, Rus. High army technology, fine-tuned guns, reload bonus time reduced from 33% to 20%. All right, I think that was it for the Rus. That was it. All right, anyway, what's next? With the last two patches, we've been focused on responding to many of prom the prominent balance and bug-related elements you told us would most improve your experience 
with Age of Empires 4. Following this patch, we'll be keeping an eye out for your feedback to better understand what other changes we might bring into play prior to our spring update referenced in the community roadmap here. The team's also monitoring matchmaking wait times and investigating additional steps to further improve this experience across skill levels and offer competitive opponents without prolonged wait times. All right, so actually this is interesting. So they're keeping an eye out for feedback to better understand what changes they may, might bring into play prior to our spring update. Very interesting. So there's actually some scope to make some changes before the spring update. This is great. I mean, honestly, I know people haven't been sort of necessarily too happy with the speed of things, but I think it's been okay. I mean, they had the winter break, um, you know, two patches in two months and slowly things are looking good and it just the support's there. That's the main thing, guys. I think the support is definitely there. So it's looking great. For those of you who were able to join us in the Ranked Seasons preview last week, thanks. We deeply appreciate your time and feedback as we prepare to introduce 1v1 Ranked Seasons we hope you and others enjoyed an early view of some of the quality of life features included in the preview as well. We're still refining these elements and really enjoyed seeing them in use. So I didn't actually get to play much of this. Um, in the comment section below, guys, tell me how it went. How did you guys find it? The ranked seasons, uh, the, you know, the preview, were there any particular bugs or things that you thought could have been changed? Um, I can always feed that back onto forums as well. So if there's anything specific, I can always try and feed that back on your behalf if you're not going to or you're not sure where to go. All right, so finally, we wanted to answer a question we've heard a few times. Namely, will Age of Empires 4 have a public update review or preview rather? The answer is yes. We'll be continuing the journey of, we'll be continuing the journey definitive edition titles started and providing early access to our larger updates on Steam. We'll have more details to share later this month regarding the timing of our first public update preview, as well as our goals with the program. Yep, so the pups, the PUP public update preview so when they have updates in the future they're going to have previews that you can give feedback on uh, before they roll it out fully that's actually quite important they've been doing that for a while i think for the definitive editions it's actually not something that's really totally well known about um so do check it out for, for more information if you need that um, public update previews it's something that's not necessarily known too well about but it's actually really important to test the new patches and updates before they come into play so you can kind of have some um, adjustments. They had a big update for Age of Empires 2 and there are lots of things going on there um, which I think they're fixing now um, and so yeah the public update preview would have been really helpful there. All right so known issues. You can find known issues here at any time. Uh, we know many of you who participated in the Age of Empires 4 closed beta and our more recent 1v1 ranked season preview are excited to receive your insider uh, in-game insider rewards. We haven't lost sight of this request and appreciate you want to show off your status as an insider. These rewards aren't ready to deliver just yet, but we're continuing to work on it and we'll provide more information when we have it. All right, so um, yeah, I think that's it. The disclaimer there about subject to change, blah, blah, blah. Um, but a really exciting patch, lots of changes, and um, I think things are looking good for Age of Empires 4. Very optimistic. The support's there, that's the main thing. And um, yeah, I think with this patch, guys, drop me a comment in the comment section below if there's anything you think actually they may have missed or maybe they should pick up for next patch or anything you're really excited about. I mean, for me, I think nerfing the Chinese um, siege was definitely a good idea. Um, and I think the fact that they've increased the rate of gathering for the berries for the Delhi and the, um, the Abbasid dynasties is a useful change as well. Um, I think those two for me are probably the biggest ones that stood out and the Mongols nerf as well. I think the Mongols we have to keep an eye on. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you did, do give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel and um, yeah, lots of Age of Empires 4 content coming on the channel. So do keep your eyes peeled and let me know what you thought about the patch. Do you think it's a good direction that we're heading in, a good step or do you think lots more needs to be done? Take care guys and see you next time.